Just finishing off the last couple of walks, there's two that you can do from the campground that are less than an hour. This one's called the Panorama. It's been pretty epic. I imagine though, with the sun out, it's pretty cloudy at the moment. The sun out, that red cliff face lights up. And I did see that on the first day, so not too concerned about missing it today. Um, yeah, we'll see what the next one looks like. Just packed up, had a bit of brekkie, hooked the van up, checked the brakes work, which is, they do, which is great. <laughs> so a little bush fix, uh, did the job. I have to do a bit better with some soldering and stuff when I get home, but uh, it's good enough for now. I'm, um, yeah, I'm on the way to Endala campground now. Don't really know what to expect. Uh, Wiki's reviews aren't that glamorous, and uh, the camp host at this last place just said, oh, there's absolutely nothing there. You've got to be fully self-contained. There's no toilet or anything, I don't think. Maybe there's a long drop. Um, yeah, so there's a walk there, pretty cool walk to petroglyphs um, and some engravings, I think, in some caves and stuff. So we'll check that out and see what happens. I've got two nights booked, don't know if I'll need both. We'll see what happens. Yeah, a few corrugations. Uh, the sign back there said, collect firewood now. So I'm assuming you don't let it collect it in there. So I think I'll uh, pull up as soon as I can and dash off into the bush and grab a few sticks. I've got a bit there already, but I um, can always use a bit more. Yeah, so we're in the Dala Gorge now. There's hordes of people here. I think they just come for day tripping, do some walks and get out of here. Um, yeah, there's only two campsites and I think I picked the wrong one. Site two's really on a lean. I don't know if I've got to get the van level. I don't really want to take it off the car because I reckon I'm only going to stay one night. Um, so I'll see who turns up and maybe try and jump on the other site instead. The um, Walk's only an hour or so long to the end of the gorge, so I'll definitely have a whole afternoon to kill if I end up staying. Uh, we'll check it out and see. Here we go. Yeah, 
yes, that's a petroglyph for some of the carvings. You can see them all over the rock. It's a naturally formed love heart. I'm fairly sure that's not carved. But um, yeah, that's what the Nadala Gorge is known for. All right, I mean, given the tip, you gotta cruise past the trail end by a couple of hundred meters and you find something special. I'm not gonna record it though, you'll just have to come and check it out for yourself. Yeah, I'm on the road again, decided to burn in Dala Campground. Uh, beautiful gorge, beautiful spot, don't get me wrong, that walk was cool. Just not a place to stay overnight. I think I thought I could find some better adventure. So, um, I've got two days left until I've got to get into Alice. I'll pick up my kids from the airport, actually. They're going to do the next stretch with me. Um, and uh, I didn't really have a plan, so I just left the gorge and I saw the sign for the binge track. And I thought, you know, what wouldn't mind finishing the binge track with the uh, caravan on the back? So we came back out past the Alatunga mining town that I went to yesterday that you would have seen already. And um, just been cruising along. And there's a homestead uh, a bit beyond the, the mining town which I can't remember the name of, I'll put it on the screen. Um, it's coming up just shortly, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I'll just pull up there for the night and then make a plan from there. Hopefully they've got Wi-Fi or something that I can just connect to to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, yeah, but the binge track's been pretty cool. I just hit a massive patch of bull dust back there, which I thought I was gonna start, uh, have to camp in, but uh, I got through it, which was good. Um, it's been a cool drive, they're pretty cruisy. I've been taking it really easy. Heaps of farm gates driving through the middle of the actual property really like trucks and tractors and all sorts of stuff going on around us so yeah we'll check in when we get to the uh, campground all right she's parked up on grass I haven't seen grass for weeks proper grass anyway so I'm at the um, Hull River homestead old Amblindum it's on the binge track, as I said before, I just came in through the front gate there. I'm um, the only one here. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi, hot showers, there's a restaurant, there's a bar. Don't know myself. Yeah, so the plan was to do a big cook-up tonight with the camp oven, or maybe even the spit, which I brought. But it's four o'clock, and I've only just got the fire going, and um, it's probably a good two to three hour show once I've got some coals, so... I reckon we will postpone the big cook up to tomorrow. I've still got a steak left there. I'll just chuck it on tonight and cook that and have it. That'll do, mate. And um, then we'll fire up the, um, uh, the proper cook tomorrow. I'll want to get back from the Ruby Gap. Just cruising across to Ruby Gap now. It's the next morning. Woke up to amazing sunrise. Um, had a bit of a scout around the homestead yesterday. They've got all this really cool rock collection for a rock nerd like me. The minerals and stuff they've got there are amazing. This property is full of, I'll be full of adventures, I reckon. Rock adventures. Um, it's just looking out the window then as we're driving along, and it's these massive quartz blows, quartz veins on the side of the hills, and apparently there's mines and stuff all over it. They've got the mica mine, and there's a lot of gold mining and other things. Oh, I'd love to come around here with a mine lab metal detector one day. I might hit him up. Um, yes, yeah, so on the way across the Ruby Gap, I used a little cut-through track they had on the property. And it took about 12 k's off the trip, which is awesome. Just spat back out on the main road now, and um, yeah, should be there very soon. About halfway in, uh, about 20 k's to go, I reckon, and the road's been tame as. It's just been graded, I think. Um, hasn't been that exciting a drive because you're sort of stuck down in the gorge you can't really see much um, except the vegetation around you so haven't really done any filming just passed a lady in an X trail who was heading up here so uh, I don't know if she'll make it across um, sandy bits if there's some coming up oh dear we just got a batch of camels wow gonna have to get the camera out for that had no idea I'd come across these guys out here Very cool.
They're in no hurry to get out of the way. driven into here and the track through to Reby Gap is where you're meant to stop. It's telling me to make sure I've got full driving gauge and my tire pressure's low, etc. So I guess this is where the adventure begins. Can't bring pets either. I have to leave those camels and that dingo behind. Yeah, well, pretty glad I didn't bring the van in, <laughs> I'll say that much. Uh, yeah, I imagine you could if you had time and you wanted to build little ramps and stuff with a shovel. You could probably get it in here, but I don't know why you'd bother really. Um, I just saw a nice little spot back there to camp, so maybe that's where you could get to and drop the van, but um, this is fairly hectic. It's probably the most insane four-wheel driving I've ever done. I just passed old mate. Oh. That got me. Um, just past two blokes on the way out and they're running bloody road tire pressures, 30s. So sand's interesting. It's like, it feels like you're bogging down, but you're, you're not really. It's got like a hard bottom or something on it. I don't know. Anyway, low range, second gear and just cruise through and I've got four max tracks in the back and a shovel. So if we do get in any trouble, then we'll um, dig ourselves out. Some of these exit points from the creek are steep and really really jagged rocky as well so i think dropping tire pressure is too low you'd risk running it doing a sidewall so pretty glad not to be uh too low i'm in the high 20s i think 28 or something yeah we'll just crawl along until we get to the end and then apparently there's a spectacular walk and you know how i like spectacular walks well that was freaking hectic all the way along hard in mouth sort of stuff um, it's deceiving though, the, the sand does look really soft and like you're going to end up down to your axles, but it was fine. Um, I'm running 28, stock ranger as I've said before, no lift or anything. I bottomed out once, <coughs> smashed something pretty hard on one of the side steps, but apart from that, pretty good. And I think this is the end of the road, there's all these rock steps here and uh, the guy on the Land Rover I just drove past before said that's pretty much the end of the line, you can... He did drive on a few of those, but <laughs> probably not really necessary. Um, yeah, so there's a pretty cool hike from here into the next gorge over, which we're going to do. I'll get on to that. Let's get myself ready. slow walk because I keep stopping and looking at rocks. This is the um, Garnet Ridge sand. 
See it all there, that red glistening. Beautiful. I've said it a few times in this episode, but wow, seriously, it's absolutely spectacular. I'm not exactly sure of the rules about camping in here. I don't think you'd be able to camp down here, but you could so easily bring in a little hiking tent, a bit of food, stay a couple of days, I reckon, plenty of water, a bit of a swim. Look at this, this nice big flat area. Perfect for it. to uh, leave my map. I've got the map of the whole Ruby Gap area. Uh, and it ends just up here. I just want to see what's around that corner. And then uh, we'll finish her up, I reckon, and start heading back. Uh, there wasn't much over that hill over there, so going to start cruising back. Glen Annie Gorge, put it on the bucket list. It's um, it's probably going to, it, it takes the vote actually for me in the East McDonald as the best walk. It's um, absolutely magnificent and I'm not sure what it'd be like on the edges of summer. Um, I'm in the middle of June at the moment so it's pretty uh, mild. I'm not sure if this water would all disappear or if any rain had come and fill it a bit more but bring a tent in here and camp overnight and uh, have your own swimming hole would be pretty awesome I reckon. Anyway, I've got to get back to camp via some firewood collection somewhere, get that fire cranking and cook up a bit of lamb shoulder. If you're going to drag a van in here, there's a couple of camps out, campsites maybe a quarter of the way in, I'm, so I'm three quarters of the way back out again. Um, it's a bit hard to explain where and how but you come across the sandy section, a bit of a rocky patch, and then you hit these clearings, and that's where I'd be pulling a van up if I was going to do it. Definitely wouldn't be going in any further. All right, <clears throat> back at camp. It was a pretty slow drive back, actually. Didn't get up back until 2. Stopped and got a heap of wood on the way in. But I've got it absolutely cranking. Hopefully get a good coal base. Decide I'm going to do a pot roast. I'm not going to use this bit. I'll do some lamb and taties in the camper, but I've never actually cooked a roast like that before, so... Trying to get a good coal base, so I put underneath and on top, um, sidle off to the side, give it a good four hours uh, at low temp to cook, hopefully. That's what we've got ahead of us, bone the shoulder. Good old coals, <clears throat> thought it'd be easy to carve. Uh, a couple of spuds, purple sweet potato, I think. Cost me a lot of money, but now I bought it. And some normal sweet potato. I've tr got a trivet in the bottom, and it's got a bit of baking paper on that. So the spuds don't stick. I don't know if that's a bad idea. Figure it out as we go along. Fire's been cranking. It's good coal base forming. Um, so let's get it all in the pot and set it off to the side and see how we go. Alright, it might have gone a bit hot. Put too many coals on top. I think it's going to be a little bit burnt. Oh yeah. Just going to be getting early tonight. Looks like it's almost ready. Yeah, I reckon I got a fairly strong suspicion that I've absolutely butchered this. <laughs> Ooh, it's looking a bit, bit dark in there. Oh, I reckon I'll salvage a few potatoes and things. The old shoulders shriveled down to a portion of its former self. Anyway, we'll get it on the plate, see how we go. 
I'm going to say that's actually not too bad. In this, like It's a bit overcooked, obviously. You want it to be a bit pink, but I think in the centre it's not too bad. Mmm. Bloody toasty. Spud's looking right. I mean, there's a few that are going to end up in the fire, but... Oh, that's right. Get it on the plate. Get it in my belly. Yeah. I'd give that a pass grade. Um, lesson for next time, though. These spun steel ovens get uh, hot really quick. Uh, as opposed to the cast iron ones, I think chucking that much coal on, um, that many coals on top of a cast iron one, it'd take ages to heat up and then the, the coals would lose a bit of their intensity so it wouldn't ramp up and cook so quick. But it's good to know. I'll just put a bit less underneath and a bit less on top next time and take a bit longer. Well, that cooked in an hour and a half. Um, the instructions for the actual bit of meat were two and a half hours at 180 degrees, which I thought was extreme, but... That's what it said. Um, anyway, we'll get into it before the flies do. Back on the bins, heading back to Alice. We'll call it the uh, end of the episode there. Thanks for dialing back in again. Appreciate the support. Jump on the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps the channel out. Um, about to pick up the kids and um, head out to the West McDonald, all through Kings Canyon, all that sort of good stuff. So I probably won't record any of that. I'll have a bit of time off the camera, I reckon. Probably catch up with you all again. Uh, maybe in the Flinders Ranges will be the next trip, next trip but we'll see how it goes. Cheers for now.